Hi, I'm Kaylee, a librarian here at Mentor Public Library. And I'm Meg, also a librarian, and welcome to this week's edition of All Booked Up with Kaylee and Meg, where each time we give you a different book recommendation on a specific theme. Today, we're going to be looking at teen read-alike books. So these are authors that we would recommend to you if you like a particular author or want to read more like them. Yes, um, so we chose this one because we are always asked as librarians to help people find books that they will like. And the best way that we do that is always asking what is a book that you recently liked. Sometimes someone just devours a series and they need somewhere to go after that. And specifically, we're focusing on teens because that can be really tricky sometimes to find something in the same vein. So we have a couple of authors picked out today that we're going to each share a couple of titles for that are similar style. And all of the books that we're going to talk about today are available for you uh, both in the library as well as online with your library card through Libby and Hoopla. So Kaylee, what is your first author we're going to be recommending for? So the first author that we're going to talk about today is E. Lockhart, the author of We Were Liars, which actually came out quite a bit ago, but has had a big resurgence in popularity, especially because I think they made a show recently. And because of that, we've had teens asking us for books like it. So I have chosen one to talk about that's very similar in style. Uh, it's called How We Fall Apart by Katie Zhao. And this takes place at Sinclair Prep, which is an elite high school on the Upper West Side. And Jamie Ruan is the queen bee. She can make or break someone's reputation with just a word. No one knows this better than Nancy, who has been one of those ones broken by Jamie over time. Her and her three friends, Akil, Alexander, and Crystal all used to be friends with Jamie until the incident two years ago. Now, Jamie has gone missing. And also, someone has hacked into the school's social network. Just a few days later, Jamie's body is found. The hacker points to the four friends, Nancy, Akil, Alexander, and Crystal, who are all hiding something. And this hacker seems to know their secrets, secrets that only Jamie knew. And they say that they are going to expose the secrets in order to identify Jamie's killer. So how did the hacker find out these secrets if Jamie was the only one who knew? And Sinclair Prep is a very prestigious school with a lot of almost mysterious history behind it. And it's filled with a lot of these kids who are your typical spoiled rich kids, which puts Nancy, who is a scholarship student, sort of on the outs with a lot of them just for that. All of these kids are under pressure from their parents to perform exceedingly well in order to get into the best schools after their high school career. And that's part of where some of these secrets come from. Some of these kids will do anything to get into the right school. And so this is similar to E. Lockhart's writing style in that it's uh, one of these suspense novels where you have an unreliable narrator, which has become very trendy in a lot of teen literature we've seen these days. And so I think if you enjoyed We Were Liars or other books by E. Lockhart, you should check out How We Fall Apart. Ooh, yeah, it definitely sounds mysterious, and I like that. It sounds like a page turner, so sounds good. Uh, my next one, I think, has definitely a similar vibe. I would also recommend it if someone, you know, enjoyed E. Lockhart and her books. It's called Little Monsters by Kara Thomas. This one came out a couple years ago, and it's a psychological thriller about appearances versus reality and the power of manipulation amongst a group of teenage girls. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> so the main character in this one, her name is Casey. And she's the new girl in a town called Broken Falls. So you already got like a great city name for a mysterious <laughs> story. Um, so she's moving there to live with her father and her dad's uh, new wife, her stepbrother, and her loving half-sister who's like kind of in love with her. Like just, 
totally obsessed with her. So it's a totally different family dynamic for her. She used to living just her and her mom. Um, it was kind of a, a rougher life. And now she kind of has a little bit more stability. She gets to go to this nice school in this nice neighborhood. Everyone on the surface seems really nice and is really welcoming towards her almost suspiciously so. She's almost a little like, okay, everyone loves me a lot. <laughs> and including the people at school that she goes to. She kind of quickly gets into this little clique of girls. Um, Bailey and Jade are two girls who like welcome her with open arms, invite her to everything. So everything so far, so good. But then there is a huge party at the school. And for some reason, all of the goodwill suddenly disappears uh, for Casey. No one wants to tell her about this party. There's a lot of mystery around it. And in fact, they won't even let her go. So she's like, what suddenly changed? And she really wants to ask one of her friends, Bailey, what, what, what's going on? She never gets the chance to ask Bailey because Bailey doesn't show up after the party. She disappears. So suddenly the whole town is kind of an upheaval. And suddenly Casey's wondering what is going on in this town? Because it seems way different than the way she thought it was. So it's very interesting. There's obviously a lot of secrets, as, as you were mentioning in your story as well. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe some mysterious aspects to it. And Casey just kind of learns maybe when you're the new girl in town, maybe you just can't trust anybody. So <laughs> yeah, definitely an uh, interesting one for, for me. Yeah, definitely. Uh crosses over well for E. Lockhart's books because yeah. they're that sort of things aren't exactly what they appear vibe. Great. Absolutely. <laughs> so great. yeah, sounds good. Do you want to tell about our next author? Yeah, absolutely. So the next one, I'm sure some of you have heard, um, maybe if you just even watch Netflix, um, her name is Jenny Han and she's written a very, very popular trilogy to all the boys I've loved before. <laughs> yes. And so it's been, you know, um, made into little movies on Netflix. So if, if any of you are into that, um, definitely the romance genre, very sweet, touching, uh, lovable uh, main character. So those are kind of the ones we're going to be uh, recommending for you next. So Keely, what is your first one that you would recommend for a Jenny Han lover? <laughs> Uh, so my first one is called Bookish Boyfriends, A Date with Darcy by Tiffany Schmidt. Uh, and this book has a very similar feel to Jenny Hans to all the boys I love before series, which Great. I very much enjoyed. Uh, <laughs> and this is about Marilee Campbell, who is 15 and is simply unimpressed by the boys in her life. Obviously, the boys in books are just so much better. They are romantic and chivalry is not dead in those books. Merrily transfers to a new school, the Reginald R. Reginald R. Hero High, and uh, she is sure that here is where she will find her Romeo. Much better option considering before this she was at an all-girls school. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. So uh, joining her at her new school are her best friend Eliza and her little sister Rory, and right away, Mary connects with this dreamy boy named Monroe. He's romantic and he makes these grand gestures and gives her all of those classic romance vibes. But then there's also a couple other boys that she connects with. Toby, who is a longtime friend and neighbor who has been mooning after her for years. And maybe there's something more there. And then there is Fielding, who is aloof and brooding, but she's drawn to him for some reason. Uh, so the whole question is, you know, will Marilee find her bookish boyfriend or is fiction just that? This book also has a lot of story about the sisters and their relationship, which also reminded me again of Jenny Han's books. The okay. sister relationships are very important in the uh, To All the Boys I've Loved Before series. And Marilee is very much an idealist, which makes me think of that main character as well. Uh, okay. She has to learn the difference between her imagination and real life and where she should sort of draw that line herself which again, very similar to Han's books. So I think this is an excellent read alike. Um, and it is a series, it's more loosely connected series than um, Han's stories because the main characters shift in the future books in the series, but this is the first one. Okay, 
Wow, that sounds like a great one. I love it. I also love, you know, I'll kind of like Jenny Han's books where there's multiple characters where you don't know exactly at the beginning who she's going to end up with, you know, what's going to happen. So that's always interesting. I like that. So my uh, book that I will be recommending, if you like Jenny Han and want to read more like her, is called Exactly Where You Need to Be by Amelia Diane Combs. And this just came out this summer. So this is a brand new book. I believe it's going to be a standalone, so I don't think it's going to be part of a series, but um, it definitely gave me some of those Jenny Han vibes. It is a romantic road trip story about a teen girl's last chance to have an epic summer with her best friend before everything changes. So at the very first book of Jenny Han's To All the Boys I've Loved Before, you know, she, her sister kind of breaks up with her boyfriend and we learn that uh, the main character kind of had feelings for him and that's just kind of the beginning well that's kind of the how this story reminds me of the beginning so it's two there's two best friends Flory is the main character and her best friend's name is Casey which is actually the same name same name as the character in my other book so I just want to make sure <laughs> I'm, I'm saying it right I didn't mistake, make a mistake uh, Flory and Casey and they've just graduated from high school and it's the summer before. And so they're kind of trying to do as many things together as they can before, you know, big changes come for them. So um, Flory is going to stay home and Casey is going to move away for college. So they really want to, you know, connect and do some last things together. So one thing that is really amazing is, so they live in Washington and Flory won these tickets to watch her favorite a live recording of her favorite true crime podcast in San Francisco. So these, these free tickets, very hard to get exclusive. And Flory wants to take her best friend to go there. Mm -hmm. And they're so excited. The catch is they don't have a ride. They have no way to get there. The only way they can get there is if Flory's best friend, Casey, her older brother, Sam, drives them down. Well, this is a problem because there's a whole history between Flory and Sam. Okay, she has always had a crush on this guy and she's always had trouble being around him and, you know, maybe certain things happened last winter break that she'd rather forget in connection <laughs> with him. So there's a little bit of a history there, but, you know, this is her one chance to see this cool podcast with her best friend, so she's willing to do it for that reason. So there's kind of a fun uh, road trip that goes along with it, and maybe Flory learns some things along the way. So I just thought it was a sweet, tender romance, you know, that kind of looks at an uh, interesting time in life, you know, as you're going to college as well, so... Yes, I think that one sounds really cute. And I, I'm a sucker for road trip books. And I think this is a great time to read it. We're at the end of the summer too. So, you know, you might've done your own road trip this summer, so. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us for this week of All Booked Out with Killian Meg. We hope you got some great recommendations. And if you haven't read E. Lockhart or Jenny Han, check those out as well, because they've got some great books. Yeah, you could start there and then move on to the read aloud. Right, to ours, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Happy reading. Peace.